and then we'll set the focus uh, of the window uh, so that, yeah we have the focus on, on that window not any, on any other window right have you noticed uh, that we haven't done any direct text direct 3d stuff yet uh, well basically this is where we start uh, configuring our device our graphics card and we do that by filling out a d3d present parameters struct and I've called it d3dpp it's kind of I don't know tradition or customary to call it that. Every, every direct 3d book that I've ever read has called it that um, and we will um, perform a bit of uh, housework and we'll set it, we'll zero the memory there uh, and then basically we need to fill out this structure and I will copy the code that does that right, first thing <coughs> we're going to say that the windowed is true because we want, we're saying we're going to make a windowed application if you wanted it to be full screen like most games are uh, you'd set this to false uh, there's a few other things that you need to do you can't just set this to false to set it to full screen uh, we'll go into that uh, in another tutorial probably but for debugging purposes it's probably better to uh, display your graphics in a window because when you want to step through the program line by line if it's full screen you won't be able to do that obviously because you know, it'll be full screen and you won't be able to see your IDE um, we perform the, we'll pass the handle to the window to uh, the present parameters structure and basically this is the line that will link our window to our graphics device um, once we have created our graphics device that is, it doesn't exist yet um, we're going to say we're going to have one back buffer a back buffer is essentially an area of memory which will represent the uh, the pixels that you're going to render you know so if you're going to render a uh, pixel red there'll be an area of memory called the back buffer that will represent that red pixel and uh, you'll be able to send stuff to the, the computer monitor um, from the back buffer um, <coughs> back buffer width and height we want this to be equal to the window width and height obviously you know we don't want a back buffer that's larger than the window or it'll start cutting out detail uh, and then we want the back buffer format and this is how we were going to um, this is going to be the format of the memory uh, that we were going to use to uh, store a pixel uh, generally we like to use uh, 32 bits of memory per pixel um, uh, I think it's probably just because it's fastest to do that um, and then the way we do that is we have this built-in D3D FMT. This comes from the D3DX.h, D3DX9, whatever it's called. Uh, one sec. This comes from the D3D, yeah, D3DX9.h header file. And this is just basically saying uh, D3D format and X8, R8, G8, B8 because we want. Uh, I'll start from here. Eight. 8, eight bits to represent the colour blue, 8 bits to represent the colour green, 8 bits to represent the colour red and then this could be reserved for say uh, transparency or, or any, anything else you want but we set it to X because we're saying we're, got, we're not going to define it at this stage we're just worried about red, green and blue because if you've done anything on RGB colour theory then you'll know that you can create most colours using the RGB Using an RGB system of colours, not all, but most of them. Most of the computer monitor is worried about. And then you're going to uh, quantize it to 8 bits per channel there. So 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, and 8 bits for blue. Uh, <coughs> and uh, the swap effect here is basically once you render the back buffer to the screen, um, then you're going to have a frame of rendered information. Uh, what are you going to do when you want to render the next frame? Uh, and this says that we're just going to chuck away. We're going to discard the uh, the contents of the uh, rendered back buffer upon rendering the new frame. All right. I think if you've done it up in Java programming, there's a similar thing 
to this uh, what's it called pixel pixel format descriptor I think they call it in OpenGL which basically just says you know what format your pixel is going to be this is kind of the same thing what format the pixel is going to be you know R8 G8 B8 right the next stage is to actually create an instance of a direct 3D9 and if you remember this here this is the global pointer to direct 3D this is not the global pointer to direct 3D device so this is going to be the abstract represent representation of direct 3D itself um, and basically all I have to do with this is, is just call the function create create direct 3D uh, we pass in this constant here which just basically defines the version of the SDK that uh, direct 3D SDK that we're using uh, because they change all the time you know I've shown you August 2008's version but you know in a few months I'm having a new version and this just this just makes sure that uh, nothing stops working essentially <laughs> you get the right version of the device uh, sorry you get the right version of the direct 3D right now here we're going to create the device next line here. Now this is basically creating the abstract representation of your graphics card based upon the D3D present parameters that we defined earlier. And, this is, and the handle to the window obviously. Here you see failed. This is a macro defined by Direct3D which basically says if it doesn't work uh, we'll, we'll get the macro. Uh, if this doesn't work then it's failed. Um, and we can detect that using if it'll just return something that's at zero or below zero and then we can just say if it fails we'll say we'll error out failed to create the device we can use this all the time it's really good um, <coughs> really good for detecting failures um, so we're going to use our newly initialized up to direct 3d and then we're going to create the device based on the direct 3d SDK version. Um, we're going to use the default graphics adapter. We're going to use the current graphics card that's in your machine. Uh, if you're running two graphics cards, SLI or something like that, then you'll probably need to uh, have a couple of devices to run them properly. Uh, one device per, per graphics card. Uh, yeah, so we're going to use the default graphics adapter. Uh, we're going to use the hardware abstraction layer which basically is a, is a middleware that sits between your hardware and your program which will um, abstract away any of the uh, you know any it'll do basically the job of middleware <laughs> uh, we pass in the handle to the window that we've created so obviously you know we're linking the graphics card up with the window now by passing it the handle to the window that we obtained earlier by creating the window uh, D3D Create software vertex blah, vertex processing, which will um, abstract away any of the uh, uh, you know any. It'll do basically the job of middleware. <laughs> uh, we pass in the handle to the window that we've created. So obviously you know we're linking the graphics card up with the window now by passing it the handle to the window that we obtained earlier by creating the window. Uh, D3D create software vertex blah, vertex processing. I'm pretty sure that uh, this just uh, creates. <coughs> um, it's going to process our, our vertex information, so our, our drawing information using software when it can, um, if it can, <laughs> if we want it to. And then obviously the address of our present parameters that we defined earlier, and then obviously the device that is going to be created. We're going to uh, pass the address, and it will fill in. Essentially, it will hook the device up with this pointer here. <coughs>